All right, good evening or good morning, depending where you are. Uh, thank you very much uh, uh, to attending this uh, exciting event organized by MIT Chief. Uh, today, um, uh, it's uh, really a yeah, great pleasure that uh, I'm coming to uh, talk about our ongoing research on different uh, form of uh, you know, optical materials. So with that, uh, let me try to share my screen. All right, so can you see my screen? Uh, All right. Yeah, we can see your screen now. Okay, excellent. All right, so uh, yeah, uh, once again, uh, my name is uh, Nick Fang. Uh, I'm a professor of uh, mechanical engineering at MIT. And uh, uh, before my talk about uh, uh, the uh, research activities, uh, I would like to give you a general overview of uh, the research portfolio uh, that we developed uh, over the past 15 years. Uh, the research uh, uh, in my group uh, really uh, was stemmed from many uh, exciting discoveries of uh, materials and processes that are aiming at processing, store, or convert uh, photons or light uh, in now ever smaller dimensions. Uh, on the fundamental side, we are looking at uh, uh, you know, issues and challenges that are associated with uh, you know, uh, basically squeezing you know, light into uh, or you know, down to the monom layers of uh, say uh, structures that are even just a single atom thick, and uh, to enable such fundamental studies, we look into different. Uh, uh, fabrication processes that allow us to bring, for example, different uh, metal, different ceramic, uh, organic materials, and uh, say uh, pattern uh, techniques that now give us uh, unprecedented control of uh, geometry and uh, uh, say material integration at the uh, uh, length scales down to uh, single nanometers. And uh, using this uh, microfabrication and nanofabrication uh, platform, uh, we also uh, explored now different applications of those advanced materials. Uh, they are uh, you know, inspired by the physics of light and uh, uh, further uh, expanded towards different form of uh, wave engineering. For example, uh, we are also uh, uh, excited to learn that uh, some of the uh, concepts uh, that uh, we can by processing, storing, or steering light can be also used to address some of the uh, challenging issues in the sun and uh, uh, noise control. So uh, to come back to the research uh, topic that I wanted to share with you in the next 30 minutes or so, let me first uh, uh, introduce to you uh, an important issue that are really uh, uh, setting the trade-off between uh, common optical materials. So uh, taking, for example, a, a thin you know, absorber of uh, uh, optical material, we often run into uh, a challenge of the two uh, seemingly incompatible demands. On one hand, if we wanted to say store energies that are uh, coming from the photon into such uh, thin film materials, then uh, we wish to have you know, as thick layer as possible because the um, light attenuation really uh, is dictated by the overall thickness uh, of uh, optical you know, pathways that uh, you know, uh, allow it to dissipate and uh, uh, translate into, for example, energies uh, within the material. On the other hand, uh, in order to harvest, for example, uh, electrons or other type of uh, carriers that are uh, excited or you know, uh, converted from the incoming photons, then we wish to also have a very thin structure. You know, the structure uh, 
uh, would be seen now so that uh, other detrimental effects that are uh, related to energy loss can be uh, overcome. So this uh, structurally seen but awfully thick material is uh, a uh, important uh, concept that uh, find very exciting applications in different form of energy. For example, uh, on the left hand side, uh, we're looking to the processes that can generate, for example, say smart windows or so, uh, solar or energy converting windows that uh, uh, potentially can be uh, generated at uh, meter scales or even you know, larger. Um, and to use that to, for example, regulate heat and uh, uh, say solar energy at a different wavelengths for different uh, uh, applications. Um, this uh, has also led to a broader spectrum of uh, you know, energy solutions, such as a uh, thin film of uh, say solar absorber to convert light uh, energy uh, into thermal energy uh, that uh, will eventually be uh, uh, used, for example, to process uh, different uh, water uh, or uh, other say, uh, uh, flow uh, reaction processes. Um, and if we're looking at the overall uh, issues that leads to those uh, uh, structurally seen uh, elements and components that give us now the capabilities to, uh, again, uh, convert or emit uh, photons, then uh, we find that uh, it is possible also to boost the overall efficiency of a uh, uh, you know, solid state lighting. So what is uh, used to efficiently store energy from the say, uh, coming light source can be also uh, reversely uh, designed to now extract light uh, using now thin and uh, uh, conformable uh, materials such as uh, organic light. I'm sorry. Uh, do you hear a echo? Uh, if uh, possible, could you please uh, uh, say mute your phone uh, or mute your, your microphone uh, during the presentation so that uh, I will not hear myself talking uh, in my the, uh, uh, during this uh, Zoom meeting as well. All right. So uh, this is uh, indeed a, a very interdisciplinary uh, task of research, and we are very grateful to have uh, many brilliant uh, talents from different uh, uh, research collaborators. For example, uh, in terms of uh, solution process to solar windows, uh, we had uh, opportunities to collaborate uh, our, uh, with our colleagues uh, from material science and uh, bioengineering, uh, Professor Angela Belcher, for example. And uh, in the uh, case of uh, solar thermal energy conversion, uh, we were able to uh, say, uh, uh, apply and uh, uh, test some of the key concepts through uh, collaborations uh, with uh, Professor Sangu Kim and uh, Professor uh, TJ Zhang's group at Master Institute to uh, uh, further uh, evaluate and expand the technology through different pilot studies. And not to mention uh, many uh, ongoing effort uh, in terms of uh, you know, high efficiency uh, light emitting devices. So, uh, for the interest of time, now let me pick up a, a, a couple of uh, key examples that uh, uh, highlight our current or recent research effort in controlling the uh, or converting the uh, light state, uh, different states of light using this uh, uh, exotic and uh, uh, functional nanomaterials at uh, uh, different uh, wavelengths. Uh, the first example that uh, uh, I, I wanted to share with you uh, involves a, a particular say, uh, geometry that are inspired by the ancient light, the ancient uh, uh, art of uh, uh, kirigami and uh, origami. Um, over here, by bringing those uh, uh, kirigami and origami at optical domain, we find that it can bring us a new uh, degree of freedom that allows to control uh, important uh, properties such as uh, optical uh, polarization states or parallel. So if I, uh, my time allows, I will also uh, share with you 
some additional examples uh, at later uh, of the uh, time of the talk. So uh, during this uh, uh, particular pandemic uh, time, uh, I find that uh, uh, this is really a, a great opportunity to revisit some of the ancient art of, uh, for example, the paper folding uh, the idea that uh, are uh, well connected to you know, different Asian countries, China, Japan, Korea. Uh, it turns out that uh, many countries has uh, uh, established or, or uh, you know, uh, entertained you know, our uh, younger generation using, for example, um, the arts of paper folding at uh, uh, different landscapes. And uh, uh, the contemporary concept of uh, the uh, paper folding and uh, uh, you know, twisting uh, idea has uh, also enabled uh, mathematical kind of uh, uh, control at a much more complex shape. Uh, taking uh, the middle example of this uh, bunny, um, uh, if you had, uh, say, uh, conceptually generated uh, a surface of this bunny, then uh, our uh, colleagues at uh, CCL, Professor Eric Demain's group, has uh, uh, really uh, turned it into a uh, automated uh, now uh, scheme that uh, transform the uh, say three dimensional bunny model into a plat um, or, or you know, a map of uh, different folding lines. Um, this is uh, really you know thanks to all of those. Uh, uh, advanced development of uh, computation and uh, uh, applied mathematics uh, into this uh, exciting area. And uh, the science of uh, origami and kirigami also uh, found uh, an important uh, uh, application during this uh, uh, critical stage uh, and challenging time, uh, challenging period of uh, say, uh, the COVID-19 period. And uh, on your right hand side, what I'm uh, highlighting is uh, actually um, the rapid generation and deployment of the face shield, uh, thanks to uh, uh, you know my colleagues, uh, 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 Professor Marty Culpepper, who uh, led now a, a research team uh, to quickly design uh, a kirigami form or of this uh, face shield and uh, uh, deployed more than hundreds of thousands of those. Uh, in the uh, say local hospitals and uh, uh, you know uh, supported our you know, frontline uh, say uh, medical uh, device uh, uh, medical service groups. So uh, what I'm sharing over here are many uh, examples that uh, uh, you can already find uh, in the scale of uh, centimeters or say uh, yeah even uh, Marco space in the world. Um, what happens if we now uh, look into a, uh, the other direction where the uh, dimensions are thousands or hundreds of thousand times smaller than uh, those you know, uh, paper-based kirigami? So uh, we really got uh, a lot of inspiration from uh, uh, Professor Jiafeng Li, who uh, took a year of sabbatical uh, and visited MIT uh, Say back in 2017. And uh, what we learned from uh, Professor Japan Li's group is that uh, they were able to use now a uh, advanced microfabrication tool, um, a focused iron beam to carve into a thin sheet of a metal layer. Uh, this you know, a gold film, for example, uh, measures uh, it at a thickness of 100 nanometers or less. And by doing so, we are able to follow similar tracks of uh, the uh, you know, paper-based, uh, for example, uh, pinwheels or uh, flowers. And uh, by carving those uh, dividing lines onto the metal sheet, we are uh, also observing an amazing effect that uh, the, uh, say, folding and, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, expansion of this uh, uh, nano kirigami that are uh, translated onto uh, a thin metallic layer. Um, so this is uh, uh, this you know, really promising. 
Uh, however, we also identified uh, some, some new challenges and new issues that are uh, specifically related to the problem of um, the micro and nanoscale. And this is uh, 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 really illustrated by uh, the uh, problem, uh, so to speak, stress map that I'm uh, uh, showing uh, in front of you on the right hand side. Um, during the process of uh, uh, ion beam cutting, uh, there uh, happens to be also a injection of uh, say concentrated uh, uh, the dopant onto the fuel, and uh, uh, such injection of uh, uh, say high energy ions will cause, for example, the top layer of a metal sheath to uh, experience uh, some plastic flow and uh, uh, leave behind. Uh, a thin layer of uh, residue stress that uh, are non-uniform with respect to the uh, thickness of the metal layer. And by doing so, uh, we see that uh, uh, for the case of a, a say flower, uh, as shown in the uh, say uh, mid column, I'm sorry, uh, there are hot spots indicating that the stress are so concentrated that uh, uh, the sample is subject to uh, immediate failure. Uh, so uh, thanks to a, uh, a now uh, new talent that uh, we had in the group, uh, uh, Hui Feng, uh, a PhD candidate, looked into this uh, particular uh, domain and uh, uh, find a, 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 a systematic way to design now the kinergonomic structures without subject to the stress concentration. Uh, on the bottom, for example, uh, the uh, example of uh, uh, say uh, the column uh, E uh, shows that we are, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, row E shows that uh, simply by now twisting different rings of this uh, uh, say, uh, spider web by 60 degrees apart, uh, then uh, the overall layer uh, become really, uh, say, uh, uniformly uh, distributing now the stress experienced by the, uh, say, expanding film. And by doing so, we can, uh, say, uh, locally control at, uh, the degree of freedom whether the film will experience local bending, rotation, and twisting at, at ease. So this uh, really has enabled uh, now a uh, computational effort that uh, uh, say uh, greatly facilitate and uh, uh, increase the productivity of such nano kirigami structures. And uh, this is uh, indeed uh, uh, quite exciting. In particular, for in our group, uh, we have been looking at a, a, a you know, challenging problem like the uh, above. So uh, uh, on the top. We are really trying to show uh, or generate uh, uh, spirals that uh, uh, resembles uh, to uh, many uh, of you the, uh, for example, the uh, electromagnets or inductors. Here, uh, by say aligning, for example, two of the spirals into a cross form, we see that uh, for incoming light that are uh, illuminating on such a say a spiral sheet we will also be able to excite now a magnetic moment within this, uh, uh, say, uh, metallic layer uh, at ease. Uh, at the resonance uh, frequency, this is indeed what we uh, observed. For a plane wave with a linear polarization, for example, in the, uh, say, uh, perpendicular direction of uh, uh, the horizontal say, uh, crossbars, we are able to observe a clockwise uh, circular polarized light as the, uh, it leaves the uh, thin sheet of metal. So this is uh, actually a very exciting discovery for us because uh, previously, uh, in order to uh, have the so-called Faraday rotation effect in the optical materials, we will uh, often need a bulky uh, element uh, a liquid cell, for example, containing a glucose uh, uh, solution 
will uh, need to be you know, centimeters or even say uh, longer to uh, really recognize the so-called uh, uh, chromatic uh, dichroism, the uh, rotation due to, for example, instant uh, uh, wavelengths of light. And uh, here uh, we show that we can use even just uh, say layers of uh, 50 to 100 nanometer in thickness and uh, uh, immediately observe a, a rotation angle above uh, 70 degrees and, and, and further at the designed wavelengths of uh, 1.5 micrometers, which is very close to, for example, that of uh, uh, you know, communication uh, you know, used in different uh, fibers and uh, uh, you know, of the uh, guided uh, uh, wave optics. So uh, this really opens up uh, uh, many uh, exciting opportunities uh, for uh, manipulating different uh, properties of light. Here uh, on your right hand side, we show that we can uh, say individually, for example, assign the uh, rotation symmetry or helicity of uh, each of the pinwheels. Uh, are from the uh, uh, the uh, fabrication process, they all will pop up, for example, and uh, form these three-dimensional helical pinwheels as uh, I uh, presented to you earlier. And now, if we start to say uh, send a, for example, linearly polarized light onto such a sheet containing many tiny arrays of those uh, uh, spiral structures, we see that the outgoing light also become separated. They are separated uh, by their angular momentum uh, of states. You may have uh, used uh, uh, very similar technologies, for example, to change uh, uh, the polarization of light using a, um, a plastic uh, sheet of polarizer. But here we show that uh, uh, the uh, momentum states or angular momentum states of uh, light can become separated using now a uh, tiny yeah, or say a structure similar to the spiral electromagnets. So, uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, really, you know, a very early stage of uh, research discovery and uh, we are actively uh, exploring different applications. And here, um, Professor Zhang Hongli's group uh, has uh, uh, further extended uh, the uh, device configuration to, for example, now uh, tiny arrays that can be built up on uh, different, uh, for example, silicon or, or CMOS uh, uh, compatible platforms. Uh, not only uh, the spirals or uh, pen wheels can now deform under different uh, injected ion, uh, say concentration of ion flux, they can also now start to say uh, uh, buckle up or bend down uh, depending on the uh, applied electrostatic uh, voltage that uh, uh, are coming from, for example, the uh, driving circuit of uh, CMOS devices. And uh, by doing so, we can now start to really make an active element or you know, arrays of those uh, tiny mirrors that uh, generate three-dimensional deformation at uh, uh, different bias of, uh, say, uh, applied voltage and uh, uh, now the scalable uh, size of those pixels can be uh, become smaller than that of uh, you know, or 10 times smaller than that of the traditional uh, say, so to speak uh, light modulators uh, that are, are widely used for today's uh, uh, communication and uh, uh, the image processing so uh, there are uh, many uh, exciting opportunities ahead of this and uh, we are really interested uh, to uh, look for different uh, research collaboration and uh, uh, co-development along this line. So uh, with that, now let me uh, say uh, switch gear and talk about uh, say more fundamental research that are also uh, enabled by uh, recognizing the polarization states of uh, uh, the, uh, for example, incoming light. Um, this actually, uh, is uh, very critical, for example, to design uh, or manipulate uh, I say, uh, microscopic uh, structures and even, say, uh, drug vehicles that uh, uh, can be injected, for example, into 
the, uh, the human body. And uh, uh, here, uh, if we wanted to drive those uh, tiny nano robots or uh, uh, micro devices, we could start to use the, uh, the freedom of light. For example, on the right hand side, we show that uh, if you have a spiral like, you know, uh, say, uh, particle that is carrying, for example, an important uh, drug material, then uh, we could uh, uh, say, uh, cause it to spin and uh, uh, migrate, for example, through the uh, different uh, uh, domains of uh, a tiny the micro channel uh, by exciting the particles using the uh, say light of uh, different polarization states. Um, so this is uh, really you know, dramatically different from, for example, the uh, previous uh, uh, capabilities of uh, light manipulation or uh, remote processing at uh, the length scales of uh, micrometers. So because here, uh, for the first time, we now have opportunities to also twist, bend, and even you know, push those uh, uh, micro robots at uh, uh, unprecedented uh, degree of uh, accuracy and uh, flexibility. So uh, uh, in order to do so in the, the long term, we will then need now to uh, look into the uh, more powerful computational tools uh, platforms such as uh, you know, systematic uh, inverse design method and uh, also to uh, you know, uh, uh, provide the essential automation platform uh, so that uh, it will enable fast and uh, robust optimization uh, of uh, those uh, say, uh, smart vehicles, smart uh, uh, devices now at the uh, length scale uh, 100 times smaller than the, uh, that of a human hair. So uh, now uh, this concludes uh, the first part of uh, uh, this ongoing research that really adds a new degree of freedom of light by say uh, shaping the nanostructures. Here uh, now uh, I'm going to give you a second example that uh, uh, could use, so to speak, the uh, say uh, a smart uh, nanomaterial that sense the environmental conditions of, for example, temperature and light. And uh, by doing so, we can start to reject, for example, unwanted heat that are coming from the uh, solar illumination and uh, turn uh, back to a transparent state that allow, for example, uh, lighting in the winter time. Uh, so this is uh, a, a, a research uh, uh, in collaboration with uh, many, uh, uh, again, you know, uh, talents that are uh, coming from, for example, uh, visiting students and uh, uh, incoming students uh, of, uh, say, uh, greater China. So uh, why this problem is important? Uh, this is, uh, in fact, uh, uh, related to the energy brought by sunlight. Taking Boston as an example, uh, during the winter time, uh, we all feel that uh, uh, even if you are sitting close to the, uh, the window, um, you, uh, there is uh, really like you know, not enough heat, for example, from the uh, space heating system. Uh, on the other hand, when we are actually uh, experiencing, for example, a sunny day of a summer time, we see that. Uh, uh, you can easily get heated or, or even sweating when you are uh, next to a, a you know a uh, window facing the uh, solar direction. This is because uh, uh, our uh, the uh, atmosphere actually changes uh, the light attenuation very dramatically at a different season. For the uh, summertime, if we have uh, roughly about a, you know a thousand watt of heat brought by the uh, incoming sunlight, then uh, at winter time we are actually looking at some, something only about 10% of that, that of uh, your, uh, solar uh, the heat uh, emission due to the uh, sun uh, uh, due to the incoming sunlight. So uh, uh, taking this information, we also find that uh, it is very essential to uh, innovate in the direction of, uh, for example, 
the uh, window technology because uh, uh, you can immediately see that today's uh, uh, buildings, in particular commercial buildings, has uh, uh, really become a you know uh, important energy sink. Or uh, it, you know, in the case of, uh, for example, Hong Kong, the uh, commercial buildings uh, takes uh, uh, close to half of, of energy of total energy supply, and uh, among them, about thirty percent of the uh, building energy is uh, actually uh, allocated towards uh, you know, providing you know, a substantial cooling, or uh, in the case of uh, you know winter in Boston, we are also looking at uh, you know, uh, space heating. And uh, yet, uh, we should not neglect the total energy that is brought by the sunlight in the uh, summertime. For a window of, uh, for example, a meter square in the area, we are really looking at uh, an average uh, solar power of uh, 300 watts per day. I'm sorry, 300 watts, you know, a, in a, say, a, 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 for the daily average. So if we are able, for example, now to um, use a smart window to reject, for example, heat coming from the sunlight, then uh, it promises to uh, save you know, almost 1% uh, of uh, the total energy supply from the US. Uh, and in certain cases, like uh, you know, Hong Kong and uh, say uh, Southern uh, Asia, uh, the overall say, uh, energy uh, budget, for example, that uh, such a smart window uh, may be able to provide is even bigger. So uh, the seasonal control uh, of uh, such a thermal radiation from the sunlight is really uh, cru crucial to reduce the uh, overall power consumption. And uh, yet, uh, many of the existing technology uh, still has a long way to go, for example, to reduce uh, the uh, cost of manufacture, uh, as well as to increase, for example, the uh, performance such as uh, you know, uh, transmis uh, trans transmission of the visible light, sometimes we call it the luminous uh, uh, transmission modulation. And uh, uh, taking, for example, a uh, famous uh, smart window that makes use of uh, a material of uh, vanadium dioxide, as an example, um, this window will need a embedded heating element because in order to turn this window dark, you have to heat up the, uh, say, uh, this uh, smart material vanadium dioxide up to 68 degrees centigrade. Um, so uh, the cost of adding such now heating element and uh, deploy such a you know, film onto the existing window uh, is uh, now the main cost driver, for example, of uh, the expensive electrochromic uh, windows. Um, and similarly, you can see that uh, uh, polymer dispersion, liquid crystal, and uh, other, so to speak, uh, active devices using similar ideas all uh, has uh, now uh, really a uh, you know high cost, capital cost, upfront uh, uh, during, for example, uh, due to the material and the installation of those uh, uh, smart materials. So uh, this is uh, why uh, we have been uh, looking at uh, the uh, solution using a different type of uh, material system. Uh, thanks to uh, say, uh, MIT alumni and uh, uh, Professor Tony Fong's group at uh, Hong Kong University, uh, we were able to examine the potential of uh, a uh, say polymer hydrogel that can be dispensed and uh, uh, processed onto, for example, much larger window area without use of expensive deposition tools. And by doing so, uh, we can see that uh, such a window will uh, really turn from the, trans uh, the uh, transparent states uh, from your, say, left side uh, to the translucent state just uh, uh, upon heating of uh, a, uh, say for example, the body heat of a, a, the pump. So, uh, and uh, this uh, is a really a, a important uh, breakthrough to us because uh, um, uh, in this particular scenario, we are able to make use of those uh, uh, transition from transparent to translucent state simply 
by forcing those uh, hydrogel particles inside the solution to react with the uh, ambient temperature, such as uh, the uh, body heat close to, uh, say, 30 to 34 degrees of Celsius. And uh, uh, by doing so, we see that uh, uh, those particles that are originally transparent, which contains you know, a, a majority of water, for example, in its uh, mixture, will start to shrink and expel water. And by doing so, the particle uh, will uh, really uh, start to reject now the infrared light, for example, uh, light emissions uh, from one uh, micrometers or uh, longer by simply uh, the uh, strong scattering instead of uh, light absorption. So we're not locking or storing heat within the windows. We reject them before they uh, enter the, the uh, window layer. So this is uh, 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 rather uh, very exciting because uh, when we uh, employ this window, uh, under, for example, different uh, ambient uh, temperature conditions, we see that uh, the transparency of this window is outstanding. It is uh, nearly uh, matching that of, uh, for example, a, a single pane glass window at, or about 88% of uh, uh, solar light can transmit through. And yet upon heating um, at uh, a transition temperature of uh, close to 31 to 34 degrees, we see that uh, it uh, uh, allows us to uh, block the infrared uh, uh, the heat brought uh, by this uh, solar radiation up to 76%. So this uh, actually gives us uh, a, a now a new solution, new uh, platform to enable, for example, uh, lower energy consumption. And uh, uh, here, we show that uh, in a small pilot studies uh, over, for example, a, a longer period of time, we are able indeed to uh, say, obtain a nearly 26% of energy reduction for a common cooling load. And uh, uh, this, uh, uh, for example, for the temperature of uh, say, uh, in a Boston or so, uh, would uh, really uh, imply that now you can save uh, yeah, up to the uh, 300 watts or so uh, per room you know, when you're sitting in uh, the uh, office uh, like uh, where I am located uh, at the uh, MIT. So uh, uh, inspired by those uh, now uh, promising findings, we are now launching uh, uh, say different uh, uh, steps of, uh, for example, field uh, research and thanks to our collaborators uh, of uh, you know, Hong Kong University, we'll be uh, starting some of the you know, first phase uh, uh, field studies at the uh, Hong Kong EMSD. And uh, we look forward to hear their feedback and comment about the energy efficiency of uh, such uh, uh, say uh, smart and uh, more uh, econo economically uh, viable solution of uh, smart windows. So uh, with that, uh, uh, now uh, let me uh, uh, say use the rest, uh, say five or 10 minutes to give you uh, our, uh, the idea uh, that are related to printing now the uh, functional uh, systems and active elements uh, using now the, uh, for example, quantum dots or so to speak, uh, uh, broadband light uh, color converters. And uh, this is uh, in, indeed a, a, a really a research need driven by the error miniaturization or nearly the now say scaling law of uh, uh, light emitting devices that are essential or important uh, not only for different uh, uh, say illumination and uh, lighting element, but also had uh, uh, wide applications of, uh, say, uh, uh, displays uh, and uh, even mobile applications. Taking uh, examples of your, uh, say, uh, say, uh, you know, uh, Apple Watch. Today, uh, the uh, screen is made out of uh, say organic LEDs, organic, uh, say, uh, light emitting devices that are already approaching 
the dimensions of uh, certain micrometers uh, of a pixel. Uh, however, further downscaling become really challenging uh, with a lot of uh, say, uh, quality issues involved. And a recent uh, uh, field study suggests that if we wanted to now really enjoy the high resolution and uh, uh, say, you know, brightness uh, enabled by, for example, the solid state uh, LED devices, then we should uh, uh, reduce the cost of a pixel uh, or a device, uh, uh, for example, per like, you know, uh, 4K TV size, we need to reduce the overall cost of this display uh, less than $100 or so. This uh, uh, field of, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, miniaturization and uh, uh, large scale integration uh, is uh, really now driving uh, the industry to develop a new uh, research technologies, new process tools. Uh, however, uh, the earlier attempts such as uh, transferring now those uh, uh, pixels of uh, red, blue, and green all together onto a uh, display uh, unit uh, really are suffering from now the uh, say defect states and defect uh, issues. So we, uh, we looking, uh, have been looking at uh, now uh, a alternative solution that uh, uh, will address the uh, challenges of, uh, for example, electronically uh, connect those uh, blue uh, LED devices. Here, uh, thanks to uh, the hard uh, research conducted by uh, you know, our students, uh, Xing Hao and Zhen Jie, who uh, recently actually graduated uh, and uh, went back to Singapore, they have been looking at uh, the method of, uh, say, uh, patterning um, now the color down converters pixel by pixel uh, 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 with collaborators uh, from Osram, uh, a uh, major player, for example, of uh, solid state uh, lighting devices development. Uh, one of the uh, important issues that uh, Xinghao and Zheng Jie uh, faced was that uh, uh, when you uh, say a uh, spread or, or say a uh, coat, now the substrate with those uh, uh, say quantum dot uh, materials, uh, we often are uh, uh, observing the so-called coffee ring effect. And uh, using a uh, very say uh, well-established chemistry of this uh, uh, styling combination, uh, quantum dots, the tiny luminescent materials. Uh, uh, each of them measuring, for example, 10 nanometers and less, uh, can now be dispensed uh, more uniformly uh, through this uh, uh, layer, uh, you know, uh, surrounded by, for example, the photopolymer materials. And uh, here uh, in front of you, we show that we are able now push the resolution limit of this multicolor quantum dot converters at uh, a pixel size smaller than uh, say 10 micrometers and uh, uh, judging for example from the patterns such as the tip of the triangles and uh, the uh, say uh, corners of the uh, you know, stars that we patterned it uh, we are confident that uh, the uh, spatial resolution can be further improved uh, and uh, eventually say meet the target of uh, for example uh, integration of uh, those uh, 4k uh, Say pixel arrays, and uh, the uh, uh, advantage of printing those uh, quantum dots onto a uh, substrate and uh, uh, allow them uh, actually to be uh, located in close proximity also provide a unique advantage of uh, the uniformity of a wide angle of uh, say, uh, a wide angle of view. Uh, on your right hand side, we show that uh, uh, the uh, spectrum of the, those uh, quantum dot uh, emission uh, emitters are nearly Lambertian, meaning that even if you are looking uh, at this window at, uh, for example, a, a view angle of uh, 30 degrees or, or uh, close to 40, we are still able to uh, really uh, observe a nearly uniform uh, say contribution of the red, green, and blue light. And such a, a say, uh, you know, uh, say, uh, wide angle of uh, uh, light distribution 
uh, has uh, uh, enabled, for example, uh, the display devices uh, with a richer, so to speak, color space. Uh, here on the bottom, we show that uh, the, uh, we already uh, can cover more than 95% of the color space for the uh, industry standard of a digital movie projection, for example, um, of uh, this uh, just using this uh, now printed uh, lens quantum dot arrays. And we can also uh, uh, now uh, you know, uh, solve the well-known challenges of so-called light leafing or say light color crosstalk by printing, for example, additional uh, say uh, block matrices uh, between the pixelated uh, color converters. Uh, so this is uh, uh, again a, a research concept that uh, uh, were recently developed uh, in the lab and we're uh, actively looking for uh, collaborations and partnership from uh, different process uh, industry upstream uh, in terms of materials as well as the uh, uh, downstream uh, integration and uh, uh, platform development. So, uh, so taking all of those uh, different ideas together, uh, I hope I convinced you with uh, now uh, a couple of recent examples in the lab that uh, we can really use now uh, the uh, rich physics of uh, optical materials to achieve uh, challenging goals, uh, not only to, uh, for example, provide uh, cleaner and brighter, say, solutions using uh, renewable energy using the more sustainable solutions, but also uh, find uh, new uh, application areas that potentially increase our computing connectivity and communication at uh, now uh, even say uh, visible wavelength scales. And uh, all of this would uh, not be possible if we uh, uh, do not have, uh, say, uh, or do not uh, gain fundamental knowledges and uh, uh, say uh, sometimes very tedious uh, uh, research in the you know, say discovery and integration of different uh, photonic materials uh, uh, for the say future uh, research, future application. So uh, with that, uh, let me uh, wrap up uh, by thanking all the uh, current and former members of the group. Uh, without them, uh, uh, this talk would not be possible. And uh, uh, I also uh, really appreciate uh, uh, the many uh, brilliant uh, collaborators from uh, both MIT and uh, uh, internationally. Uh, and last but not least, the uh, different funding agencies and industrial uh, sponsors. With that, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Fan. Um, we really appreciate your speech. That was very inspiring. Um, so now for all, of, for all of us who are still online, again, please keep putting your questions in the Q&A box or just simply like any other questions that interest you. Uh, we will start our Q&A session very shortly uh, and we'll select the questions with the most likes. And also, um, please also free, free, feel free to raise your hands. We will let you to ask questions uh, and communicate with the Professor Fang directly. Um, so uh, now um, I see, let's start with one question, if you don't mind, Professor. Okay, so, yeah, sure. So one, uh, one person, uh, he asked that, um, can we theoretically understand and model the interaction of nano, kirigami, and light? And is that diffraction or other interactions? Um, yes, uh, this is uh, a, a very good question about the mechanism. Um, we are, uh, say, uh, we should really considering the effect of diffraction within this uh, Kirigami structures. But uh, unlike the uh, textbook examples, this uh, particular Kirigami would uh, uh, really uh, uh, resort on the, so to speak, uh, uh, you know, uh, vectorial nature or basically the polarization properties that are inscribed by the orientation and the rotation in the third dimension. And this is uh, uh, drastically different from, for example, the uh, diffraction gratings that you may have been using to guide, uh, uh, say, for example, uh, or separate the light uh, you know, into a rainbow color. And uh, uh, I would say that uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, you know, a uh, say, uh, 
revisit completely uh, the uh, restructuring from the very beginning of uh, the uh, light as electromagnetic wave is uh, essential for this uh, particular research. Great, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Um, and then our next question is, um, uh, we know that based on your earlier research around printing with light, um, how possible do you think it can be applied in large scale three printing um, in fields such as like civil engineering? Um, and also uh, in spite of the speed, uh, the, the improvement of the speed, uh, will it actually sacrifice to any extent uh, the high resolution or the precision of the end, end products? Yeah, so uh, that's a, a indeed a very important point. Uh, very often the uh, pathway towards the uh, uh, real, I'll say like, yeah, uh, adaptation is uh, all, uh, need to be addressed in terms of uh, scalability. Um, I would say that uh, uh, the current printing method is uh, far from perfect. And uh, uh, yet, uh, there are uh, some successful examples we can see, uh, such as, uh, for example, the uh, you know multicolored inkjet. Uh, today, if you try to uh, you know print a poster or some kind of a mural, like you know commercial say uh, flyers, uh, you could send your design uh, to a printer that is uh, over meters wide. So, so uh, that type of printer uh, uh, share a lot of uh, common features of uh, the our needs. And of course, uh, uh, you know, this is not only just a, a, a design of a printing process, but also uh, we have to address the issues related to say uh, material science of that. Okay. Um, and then how much, in terms of the smart window, uh, uh, how much visible light or UV can still come through with a smart window? Yeah, so for the visible light, we can transmit uh, close to 88%. And uh, uh, this particular uh, film is uh, encapsulated uh, within a polymer sheet. So uh, I would say that we can block uh, nearly 90% of uh, the UV light when it is mounted on a, say, a regular single pan windows uh, uh, of uh, the overall package. And it's still, again, with the smart window, regarding the smart window, would it be possible to bias other frequencies instead of the higher range through manipulating the hydrogel? Uh, yes, uh, uh, I didn't uh, have time to further elaborate this particular uh, choice of wavelengths or, or frequency range is subject to the size or um, the geometry of those uh, uh, hydrogel particles, hydrogel materials. Uh, in our case, we are fortunate to, uh, to use a spherical shape, um, but uh, if you are interested in other uh, wavelengths or frequencies, then uh, say innovation of uh, say structuring those uh, hydrogels may become important. Great, thank you. Um, and also, I saw you also mentioned uh, the uh, breakthrough, uh, the the benefits to the more to breaking through the Morse law. I know uh, in the chip making uh, manufacturing industry uh, that uh, people now one pioneering stuff is uh, the string ultraviolet lithography for the next wave of uh, uh, Morse law. So, do you think that's something within the scope of your research, or uh, it's not related? Um. So uh, I'm really grateful that uh, uh, the extreme UV lithography uh, finally break the ground. Uh, by the time I was at uh, graduate school, um, you know, a lot of uh, you know my colleagues uh, and uh, I'll say peers uh, uh, talk about the extreme UV lithography in different conference talks. Uh, it was a, a really challenging problem. Um, so uh, you know, I had a one little you know, opportunity window at that time to uh, pursue research toward that direction, but I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, follow. So uh, today it'll be too late for me to jump back onto that uh, area. Uh, however, I'll say that uh, uh, a lot of uh, say, uh, those uh, research breakthroughs will not be made possible if uh, you are 
you know, not willing to take those, you know, really uh, hard challenges. Got it, got it. Um, and then uh, we just had another question. Um, so can Professor, can you outline the route and the timeline needed to transfer uh, this axon, all these axon results into commercial use? Uh, again, I, do, I wish I have a crystal ball to tell you, you know, how to predict those. Uh, I will say that uh, uh, depending on the research uh, directions, uh, you know, many of those uh, uh, the studies would not be possible if you could not find a, I'll say, a field expert or uh, you know, a, a advocate that uh, uh, bring, uh, for example, the uh, pathway to commercial use. Uh, taking the uh, smart window as an example, uh, I will say that uh, we are uh, still looking for say, uh, you know, I'll say like partners that address uh, some of the, you know, uh, critical quality issues uh, for the scaling up. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I also see that uh, there are uh, several uh, say successful startups uh, along the uh, line of a more general, so to speak, a smart window, smart, uh, uh, say, cooling solutions. Uh, so, um, the answer is uh, it depends on what type of team uh, you are able to bring together. I see. I'm I'm just uh, curious because we all know that you are also the founder and chief scientist at BMF Material Technology. So, uh, in terms of this, uh, I know from like from life science to uh, the actual industrial products. Uh, is there anything that uh, uh, you can share with us? Like anything surprised you or anything that you? found this uh, very interesting you know, when you fill this gap between uh, research, pure research and uh, the actual um, product? Well, uh, I guess uh, this is a, a very important question. And uh, uh, I wanted to say that uh, uh, we are fortunate to uh, say, see the growth and uh, uh, say um, the flourishing uh, uh, of uh, BMF, for example, uh, you know, as a startup uh, uh, in the past uh, three or four years. Uh, uh, one uh, important lesson I learned is uh, to reach out to uh, different people early as possible. Uh, for example, some of the key ideas uh, uh, were really a result of the discussion uh, at uh, the iTeams class offered by you know, our colleagues at the Stone School. And uh, we also had uh, a lot of, uh, so to speak, um, you know, important feedback when we uh, say visited uh, different uh, stakeholders, different uh, uh, say opinion leaders in, in, from uh, a representative industry. Understood. Thank you very much. We wish, uh, we really wish we could have um, time to hear more, but we also want to be very mindful of your time. So I think that already concludes our time slot for today. Um, and then we just want to say very, very thank you to for taking the time today and sharing with us your very inspiring findings and insights. We really appreciate it. Thank you. For thank you. On. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have a uh, uh, questions related to our research or uh, any problems yeah. uh, uh, that I can answer. Thank you. Thank you so much. We hope to see you again in the future. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Um, and I also, I want to say a big thank you to all of us who are tuning today. Um, we really appreciate your uh, support. And um, also, we very much want to, to see all of you again, actually next Thursday, sep September the 3rd. Um, for our second episode of this future lecture series. Um, this, uh, the next time we will invite uh, Professor Robert Bisimoni from MIT. His research focus will be uh, brain and cognitive science. And then um, please everyone just uh, follow the event updates on our official account on WeChat, Weibo, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And if you have any further questions um, on this, on today's topic, please also feel free to uh, scan the QR code on the screen now to join our WeChat community. Again, thank you very much all for attending. Um, you may now disconnect uh, and we look forward to seeing all of you guys next week. Thank you, bye-bye.